Please stand for the playing of the national anthem. Faye, would you lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This evening, Council is appreciative to have Bishop Hezekiah Martin of Southfield Community Missionary Baptist Church to pray with us. Pastor, welcome back to Council. Good evening, let us go to God in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for allowing us to assemble today. We are grateful for your love that you see through all boundaries. We thank you, God, for keeping us. But most importantly, we thank you for peace. It is our prayer, God, that you will extend that peace here in our city, beyond our city and state and country and to, to foreign lands. Allow your harmony to raise up. And God, we want to feel your presence that you will continue to cover this council. Bless them, God, not only in the walls of city council, but bless them when they're going in and coming out and bless their homes. Provide safety and security to them, God, as they will provide leadership to this city and take us to a higher level. We thank you, God, for continuing to give us joy. We continue, God, to seek your face and wisdom and guidance through all things, and we will forever be grateful for your agape, unconditional love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Bishop. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, de Akauer, Dorans, Faber, Green, Remy, Weich, President Harden. Any person who takes any actions to obstruct or interfere with the conduct of tonight's meeting may be charged with, charged with disturbing a lawful meeting pursuant to Columbus City Code 2317.12. Any person who enters those areas of city council chambers reserved for city officials or invited guests may be charged with criminal trespass pursuant to Columbus City Code 2311.21. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Can I get a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal? Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcauer, Dorns, Favor Green, Remy White, President Harden. Thank you. Are there any additions uh, or corrections to the journal? Hearing none, the journal is approved. This week's communication received by the city clerk's office are listed on the agenda and will be published in the city bulletin. Are there any other communications to be read into the record? Not this time. Thank you, Madam mm -hmm. Clerk. We'll now go around the dais uh, for any announcements or resolutions, starting with Councilmember Bankston. Councilmember Barosa de Padilla. Councilmember uh, De Alcar. Thank you, President Harden. I wanted to thank everyone for all the birthday wishes that were unfortunately coupled with get well <laughs> <laughs> wishes. And I apologize for all of the coughing I am going to do this evening. I am over my illness, but the cough has lingered. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Councilmember, and happy birthday. Presswell Tim. Uh, that's me. Councilmember Favor. Councilmember Green. Councilmember Remy. Councilmember White. All right. Um, are there any comments from our elected officials? Hearing none. Are there any requests by members of council for the removal of an ordinance resolution from the consent action portion of the agenda? Hearing none, may we now have a motion to waive reading of titles of 30 day legislation by the clerk. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcauer, Dorans, Favor Green, Remy White, President Harden. Thank you. Will the clerk now read into the record ordinance numbers of 30-day legislation on tonight's agenda for first reading? 
Finance and Governance Committee, Ordinance 18-2024. Public Service and Transportation Committee, Ordinance 3556-2023 and Ordinances 91 and 149-2024. Workforce, Education and Labor Committee, Ordinance 182-2024. Health, Human Services and Equity Committee, Ordinances 2 and 84-2024. Public Utilities and Sustainability Committee, Ordinances 65, 72, 77, 133, 134, 138, 139, 153-2024. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, we don't have any speakers on the first uh, reading portion of the agenda. The following ordinance appear on our agenda as consent action. Will the clerk now read those ordinances in the record? Resolutions of expression 8 X, 9X, 10X, and 11X-2024, Finance and Governance Committee, Ordinances 3533-2023, and Ordinance 240-2024, Economic Development and Small and Minority Business Committee, Ordinances 1525, 92, 202, 208, 238, 239, 241, 242, 243, 244, 245, and 246-2024, Public Service and Transportation Committee, Ordinances 20, 54, 58, 82, 97, 180, and 196-2024. Neighborhoods, Recreation, and Parks Committee, Ordinances 35, 16, 35, 17, 35, 18, 35, 19, and 35, 21, 2023. Workforce, Education, and Labor Committee, Ordinances 3595-2023, and Ordinances 4, 5, 11, 254-2024, Housing, Homelessness, and Building Committee, Ordinances 3528 and 3543-2023, and Ordinances 13, 14, 27, 57, 94, 166, and 167-2024, Health and Human Services and Equity Committee, Ordinances 3470, 3514-2023, and Ordinances 3478 and 137-2024. Public Utilities and Sustainability Committee, Ordinances 3245 and 50-2024. Rules and Policy Committee, we have appointments from Mayor's Office numbered A00, 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27 2024. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We have uh, several speakers on the consent portion of the agenda. First speaker to come before council is Jared Hashimoto. Hashimoto. Welcome to council, sir. You're speaking on ordinance 3543. And uh, just a reminder uh, that you have three minutes to speak. If you represent an organization, if you let us know, please. Welcome. Good evening, members of the city, city of Council. My name is Jared Hashimoto, and I am the community leader of Site 1. First and foremost, I want to thank you for the time, as it's been waiting for a very long time to speak with you. I'm extremely nervous because this is the first time I will be talking about my site in a public and on record, so I hope for me, and most importantly, my residents' sake, it doesn't have dire consequences. This February will be the first one-year anniversary for me in Site 1, when I spent about a week cleaning up the remnants of an old, ransacked, abandoned homeless encampment, hidden away in a muddy clearing within a patch of woods behind a grocery store. I made sure that all the micro-trash and old needles and muddy ripped tents, old clothing, and the things I wish not to talk about were out of there. <clears throat> one grocery trip after another, or <clears throat> with a grocery cart. This is when I met a very friendly security guard named John who told me, can I shake your hand? <laughs> we are just not used to seeing trash come out of there. And he would become the first to donate to Site 1 and a good friend to have. From there, I began arranging a few pallets into place, and I found and got all those I had arrived who camped down in the ravine up, up into the site. Then I coordinated our group to do a massive cleanup down in the ravine, not to just clean up after ourselves, but because I so happen to end up back in my old neighborhood somehow. A few blocks east, where I am now, was the first and only apartment building I had ever lived for almost 20 years. For over half of my life, I called that home, and nobody thought <clears throat> I'd ever leave, so when I wasn't there, they thought I died. All it took was a new landlord, a pandemic, and the incentive to want to charge the next tenant double than what I paid <clears throat> all that time. And just like that, didn't, didn't just lose my home, but had to leave the neighborhood I had fallen in love with, and so much more, so I thought I'd never be back. Anyway, <clears throat> there was my first out of the three displace, displacements in three years. It was the third one, however, that led me to create Site 1. 
and to prove something which is why I'm here speaking with you. That group that I had came from the warming center, <clears throat> that was uh, shut down prematurely. If I were to describe what happened, I would imagine the school shooting where everyone blamed the students, then shut the school, shut down the school. The news said it was an unprovoked stabbing when it was a guy that had been banned from the center earlier and came back with vengeance, set fire out back and ran out to the front and stabbed two of our own. But that's not what it was described as, and we were punished for that in many ways. But mostly, <clears throat> but mostly they prematurely threw us out <clears throat> when so many were waiting on things like birth certificates, pieces of mail regarding their cases, essentially, things that they need to get housing. We were all victims of East, or 82 East 16th Warming Center shutdown, and so I began designing a model that will give these guys a safe place to lay their heads at night so they can get to their next step. Out of the nine original residents, the ones that were in the ravine, six are now in homes, but that's just a fraction of what I managed to do. I tell all residents that we are in a homeless encampment. We are of a private residency who must earn the trust and respect of the community that hosts us. When people see an encampment, <clears throat> they think drugs, crime, and trash. They don't usually say, wow, this is really nice, or say that it's better than the last Airbnb they stayed at. They... Are you almost done, sir? You can, you can finish, <clears throat> please. They, they, do it, <clears throat> they do it site one where it's all about accountability, guest sign-ins, designated lot maintenance, policies and guidelines, tent repairs, raccoon, trash cl party cleanups, residential agreement forums, filling out incident reports, setting security lights, organizing the community tent, collecting ravine water to boil for our dishes, preparing warm food for the residents, setting up privacy walls, and ho hoping I have an extra tent for someone in the maintenance tent <clears throat> during a thunderstorm, pallet leveling, night checks, setting up privacy, or I'm sorry, <clears throat> I'm, I'm really nervous. No, you're fine. Writing apology letters, assuring I'm holding the resident accountable that burned the trash, making sure trash is emptied, linking residents with caseworkers, public uh, park night cleanup, protecting residents that, <clears throat> assuring residents that they have nothing to worry about when they got assaulted on the way back to the site, having to do interview process for a potential new resident, and realizing I still have to walk a few blocks away to Taco Bell to charge my phone because it died. All worth it to me as long as I get as many of them out of this mess as I can. And that uh, safe, uh, safety and security, uh, you know, they have safety and security while they do. Next month, two of the few remaining residents, one, of, one from the original group I have left, officially is on their way to their housing through the resources they are, we are affiliated with. That makes 12 residents in one year. With three that had to be re relocated because all is held accountable for their actions and behaviors <clears throat> the moment they sign up for them at, sign one, uh, at site one. There's so, <clears throat> there so much more I could have done at site one, <clears throat> and I don't, have, I don't even have the time to tell you the many and many things I had to deal with and the dangers that we all faced. <clears throat> but I was able to do that with zero dollars, with no staff, and relying on the generous donations of strangers and organizers <clears throat> who, expressed, uh, who I can uh, express how grateful I am for that. And when, the, when sweeps go around, we do a huge cleanup to make sure that everything back there is as clean as possible, even though it's mostly clean already. And so I always tell the residents, hope for the best and expect the worst, because they can evict us at any moment, because it's your property, and we're sorry we're there. I just know that in this neighborhood, there's plenty of opportunities, and there's uh, resource centers, and uh, there's not much, but... Sometimes I sit on my deflating mattress <laughs> and I think uh, I could do so much more for them, like maybe have some power source up here, if, like I had anything, but I kind of have to rig it as I go. And I literally started with just, you know, a bag full of, you know, a bag full of my clothes, an art box, uh, a painting wrapped in plastic, this black binder, and, and a pen. And... Uh, if you saw the site today, all, all of that was like earned over time or donated and, uh, or just you know, out of sheer luck. Um, and in this binder, like if it wasn't this binder, holds all the forms and everything to show that I, I was able to get 12 out with nothing. Like they all have homes and uh, I'm so grateful. And as for me, I'm just in a homeless purgatory. I'm just in a situation where my essential work is being held hostage by an abusive ex. So uh, that's, that's something I, I have to deal with. But, you know, until then, I'm going to continue doing what I do. And I'm not asking anyone for money or anything like that. I'm just saying 
I able to, if I could get one a month for a year in the housing with zero dollars to my name, like, yeah. if you can imagine what I could do, like, when, you know, I had, I had, I could get them things. Sometimes I'm scrapping up coins just to get water for them. Well, Mr. No. Mr. Uh, Hashimoto, thank you. Mm -hmm. First of all, thank you for sharing your story. Thank you. It's very difficult to stand up in front of folks here in this chamber, but I'm grateful that you did. I'm grateful also that you uh, are doing the work uh, out there and, and, and working with our, our residents to get them into housing. We, we really do appreciate that, and we want to be a partner. Um, I'm, uh, Council Member Favors' team wants to talk with you to make sure that we are connected. So if there are resources that we can connect you with, that you're, you feel supported in the work. Yeah. And we'll also ask uh, the Department of Development's team uh, to engage with you too before you leave this evening, if that's okay. Uh, I'm grateful to the Department of Development because when sweeps went around, um, <coughs> they, they just let us stay and that was twice. So we must be doing something good. Thank you, sir. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Next speaker to come before council is Mr. Joe Motil. Mr. Motil, you're speaking on uh, Ordinance 3543 as well. Good evening, uh, President Hart, members of City Council, Joe Motil, 167 West Cook Road, Columbus. I'm not disputing that funds from the $16 million grant are permitted uh, to be used to pay for city personnel expenses for time worked on this grant program because city budget dollars have already been uh, have already have been allocated for those employees benefits and salaries to perform such work as part of their jobs I feel that these three hundred sixty one thousand dollars would be better spent towards benefiting the needs of and the intention of the sixteen million dollar grant rather than what appears to be padding the city's payroll the sixteen million dollar grant is earmarked to primarily benefit individuals and families who are homeless at risk of homelessness or in other vulnerable populations. This includes the development and support of affordable housing, tenant-based rental assistance, provision of supportive services and acquisition and development of non-congregate shelter units. In a last minute effort to address our own house who were suffering from living in freezing temperatures, on December 5th, 2022, City Council allocated $595,000 to the Community Shelter Board to support two 24-hour warming centers with about $130,000 of those funds going towards providing meals. Two months later, the two 24-hour warming centers shut down in early February, but were to, main, were to remain open until March 15th. One closed early due to safety concerns and the other due to staffing issues. The city and shelter board have had a full year to prepare for this winter's freezing temperatures and to make better accommodations for our unhoused, but in my opinion and others have failed. To be clear, our unhoused and the public have always been legally permitted to keep warm in rec centers and libraries during hours of operations, and I give some credit to the city for extending hours at five of its rec centers for a limited number of days. And regardless of the shelter board and city officials who claim no one would be turned away from overnight shelter, that was not the case, and I have clear and compelling evidence as such. And although most were given overnight shelter, the shelters were so over capacity that some had to sleep on metal folding chairs. But over the course of the year, what tangible policies have been put in place to address this problem? Why can't some of our rec centers be utilized as overnight warming centers? What policies and plans have been created for transitional or non-congregate housing? The Council's Housing and Homelessness Committee needs to implement a Housing First initiative. You can implement a motel voucher program. Use land bank properties to construct transitional housing villages and or permanent housing for our homelessness. A municipal ID program. But instead, hundreds of thousands of taxpayer dollars continue to be spent on sweeps and law enforcement personnel whose time could be better spent patrolling our crime-infested neighborhoods. The Shelter Board CEO and a prominent Columbus developer recently stated that we need, quote, a whole lot of money, there is plenty of money, but the distribution is not there, and we don't have the will to address homelessness. To find some of that money, I would suggest that our mayor and council president contact the wealthiest of Central Ohio, that being the leadership and 80 members of the Columbus Partnership, and hold them to their namesake and to serve as a primary, quote, Columbus partner in this long neglected social injustice that has been plagued, that has plagued Columbus and Central Ohio for too long and will worsen unless immediate action and financial resources are made available. 
Thank you. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Joe, and thank you for raising the issues around the warming centers in particular. It's been a focus of this council as well. If you, I think you were at our uh, hearing I was this at Thompson. week. No, I didn't make the hearing. Okay, no. but, but we, were, we were asking some, some similar questions and trying to figure out what that plan is going forward to make sure that everybody has a place to go to specifically and especially during uh, inclement weather or emer weather emergency. So I, I appreciate your advocacy. You are scheduled to speak on another ordinance. You want to go ahead and go now? Sure. Yep. Yeah, I, I just think, you know, as our, to reiterate, we need to get this plan in place before November, December, when weather starts getting cold. And this particular uh, ordinance is regarding the uh, parcel of Camp Shameless that some of you are familiar with, uh, 897 East Mount Street. And I'll be brief with my comments. Uh, I just want to say, and I am in favor of this, I want to say that I believe, as many others do, that the nonprofit organization First Collective, who created the Camp Shameless Homeless Encampment that once sat on this property, should be commended for not only pushing the city council to provide for transitional housing for those residents who once lived at Camp Shameless, but also for advocating that this property would be utilized as it was intended for, for the, the 16 years that the city has owned this property. And that, is for, and that is housing for our most vulnerable. The city needs to financially support and listen more to our community's boots on the ground, unhoused advocates who are truly in the trenches, fully understand their needs, and serve in personal relationships with our unhoused. I have a sense that I came in late during the earlier testimony that that is one of the individuals. And as much as I'm very comfortable in knowing that this project will be taken on by the Columbus Housing Network, the city should be more open-minded to supporting the long-term efforts of nonprofits such as First Collective, Gold Heart Outreach, Hair to Serve, and others, rather than taking their ideas and solutions and passing them on to larger nonprofits to carry out. Spreading the wealth to others and allowing them to achieve their plans will help us all to meet our mutual goals. And I believe, again, I came in late during the prior testimony. I think that's what he's talking about. We need to look at other players in the nonprofit organizations, people as, like the gentleman who was here earlier, and start supporting these groups who have a true understanding of what works. First Collective showed it at Camp Shameless, that 50, 56 unit uh, apartment building that's gonna be uh, supported by the Columbus Housing Network is great. Uh, you know, been sitting on this property for at least 16 years, I believe, Director Stevens, and it's always been earmarked for that. So uh, it's, it's about time, and let's do some more of this. So thank you. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Motil, and, and thank you for the support of this project and, and the advocacy as well. Uh, to your point, 56 units going for affordable. We're even going to be able to house some of the folks that were there. So I do appreciate uh, the advocacy and the work that's been done. Okay. Thank, thank you. you, sir. Uh, the next speaker to come before council is Mr. Nathaniel Wilkins. <laughs> Mr. Wilkins is speaking against Ordinance 0014 2023 in housing. Welcome back to council, sir. Thank you for having me. Uh, a few minutes here. Uh, 1612 Arlington Avenue. I'm against uh, for these problems for several reasons. It's because I feel like Habitat has already done too much for North Linden and South Linden and other parts of the area district. Um, <laughs> excuse me here. Um, what I would like to recommend is not Habitat to build any more homes in Linden. And let's start looking at affordable housing to be built from the ground up for people that's homeless or misplaced out of certain properties or apartment complexes. I do believe that we need more sustainability houses for those people that's been misplaced out of Colonial Village, uh, 525 Latitude, and uh, Galloway Apartments. I'm against this for several reasons because Habitat already done too much um, like I say, um, we want to bring some different entities in to giving those people that's been misplaced out of these homes or giving them a first time option to buy a uh, property that's due to County Land Bank. Thank you for your time. Mr. Mr. 
Mr. Wilkins, last time you spoke on Habitat, we asked Habitat to meet with you. Has that happened yet? No, sir. Okay. We will follow up. Uh, are there any other questions or comments on the consent portion of the agenda? Here and now, may I have a motion to approve? Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcower, Dorrance, Faber, Green, Remy, Weich, President Arden. Passed. We'll now proceed with the second reading of 30 day postponed and emergency legislation. The first committee is Economic Development, chaired by Councilmember uh, Bankston. Councilmember, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Council President. Uh, tonight in Economic Development, and Small and Minority Business Committee. For a second read, we have Ordinance 0215-2024 to authorize the Director of the Department of Development to enter into a contract with Buckeye Innovation in an amount up to $100,000 for the purpose of administering a program under Accelerate Columbus 2024 to authorize the expenditure of $100,000 from ACPO 009769 to authorize reimbursement of certain expenses incurred prior to execution of the purchase order and to declare an emergency. Uh, I'm really excited about uh, this ordinance um, and also the ordinances that were on our consent agenda. This ordinance is one of 10 ordinances on tonight's agenda regarding the third year of our Accelerate Columbus program. Accelerate Columbus is a city funded program that provides training, one on one advisement and technical assistance to both aspiring and existing entrepreneurs and small businesses. Uh, this year, the program will aim to support over 700 businesses uh, via 10 sub programs ran by our program partners. I want to underscore and co um, commend Department of Development that last year's program, we were over, a, able to serve over 400 businesses. So really excited about this program and its continued growth. The program will allow uh, participants to choose from a list of 10 programs that they believe best suits their needs. That way, participants are able to maximize the use of their time by drilling down on specific knowledge gaps that they have, as opposed to receiving general small business advice that they may already know or simply don't need. Uh, the, pro the proposed program partners for this year are Expose Your LLC, ECDI, the Women's Small Business Accelerator, the Columbus Empowerment Center, Columbus Chamber, the Catholic Social Services, First SIP Studios, Marketing Department LLC, Bridging Our Communities Together for Success, and Buckeye Innovation. Uh, with us tonight, we do have uh, two of our program participants. I'm going to ask them to come forward this time, uh, Brad Griffith and Ms. Beth Min uh, Dooney. Uh, Brad is with uh, Buckeye Innovation, uh, and Beth is with Marketing Department LLC and will be uh, two of our organizations that will be supporting our entrepreneurs this year. Uh, Brad, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Bankson, President Harden, Council members. Thank you so much for your support of Accelerate Columbus. Uh, I'm a president of Buckeye Innovation, software engineering firm. Uh, I want to start off by asking how many of you and, and those in the room have a small business in your family or you grew up in an entrepreneurial household? Well, we've got quite a few. So you could probably identify with the limited resources that small businesses have. You might get your, your neighbor or your friend or maybe you have someone that you know who's an attorney or uh, they might build websites or marketing. We want to help bring those resources to small businesses in an equitable way. That's why I started Buckeye Innovation. Our vision is to bring equitable access to exceptional design and development of websites for all businesses and organizations. That means businesses that are minority owned, they're female owned, they're in Columbus instead of the Bay Area or New York or Chicago. There are lots of different reasons that people don't have the same access as a small business owner to help market their business. We've proposed, and I appreciate your, your support of the years past, we've proposed a workshop series called the Website Acceleration Workshop. And what this will be is it'll be a multi-part workshop for entrepreneurs who want to take an active role in the building and maintaining of their website for their business. You can imagine, for those of you who have an entrepreneur in the, entrepreneurial in the, entrepreneur in the family, uh, if they had had a great website that communicated with the same passion and exuberance that the owner of the business did, they would probably be far more successful. I, I had a, my dad was a, a veterinarian. He practiced his own, he ran his own practice for 50 years in Dublin. And uh, he had some just amazing success stories for animals that he cured of diseases that others could not. And just knowing that his website, his marketing, the services that he got, those were critical to his ability to succeed and grow. 
I want to make sure that other businesses have access to great services and they have the knowledge they need to grow their websites. So we have a multi-part workshop series where we'll help businesses to learn how to maintain their own website. And we'd, we'd like your support this year and then hopefully we'll show you success that enables you to invest even more in future years. So thank you so much for your support. We'd appreciate your referrals for those entrepreneurs in Columbus so you know who could benefit from this. <laughs> thank, so, thank you, thank Brad. You. And um, I think it goes without saying that the rise of e-commerce and digital work that uh, many cases, the first um, impression that folks get is a company's website. And so it's a critical uh, step to business success. So thank you for all that you have been doing, but what you will do with our entrepreneurs here in Columbus. So thank you. Thanks for your support. Thank you for being here. And we have Beth Menduni. I think I said that right. That's correct. All right. Uh, with you. Marketing Department, LLC. Marketing Department, Beth Menduni. I'm the founder and chief storyteller. We're doing business as Video Story Studio. So if you see that come across, it's me. It's the same thing. But it's with great gratitude I get to address you today. Um, my program that I'll be putting on for small businesses, micro businesses, is very vital because we're going to be talking about brand messaging. We're going to help business owners be able to communicate with confidence, with clarity to their prospects and their potential clients so they'll be able to get those contracts and grow their businesses. It's all about brand messaging and being able to communicate your value for higher profits, which is exciting for all small businesses. Um, brand messaging is important, being able to communicate your value. I know what it's like to start from confidence zero as a new business owner. 2016, I, I started my company and I had been laid off and I had an infant and I was scared. And I didn't know to how to properly price myself or how to communicate what it is I offered and what I could bring to my clients. And with experience and lots of mistakes and lots of learning, I was able to get there. Um, when you're a small business owner, you have to battle imposter syndrome. You have to embattle self-awareness and self-esteem and be able to communicate to convince somebody to purchase your service or good. It's hard. So that's what my program is going to be about. We're going to address those issues. Um, actually, I am a 2019 participant of the Accelerate Columbus program, the Scale Up and Grow, the inaugural class. And what did I do? I scaled up and I grew. We realized since in the past four years a 60% revenue growth, which is huge for huge for a small, women-owned video production agency. And um, it has been amazing. And because of programs like this, continued reinvestment into my education, programs like this with the city, who are able to support me and say, yes, we see you. We're going to help you. So with gratitude, I am very grateful that this has been an initiative by our city um, for your continued investment into the small business ecosystem. I know many entrepreneurs from um, New York City over to Spokane, Washington, who do not have this type of support from their city. They're very jealous, and they're like, how do I get this? And I say, get involved. So thank you. And I cannot wait to realize the impact from 2023's program and 2024's program, and you're to, for all of you to see the return on investment for investing in your small communities, because from just the few testimonies we've heard today, there is a need. You can take our tax revenue, you can, we can reinvest it back into the city and help all communities grow. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Beth. And I don't want to, I want to underscore this. I don't want it to be lost uh, that you were a participant in the 2019 cohort of Accelerate Columbus. That's what this program is all about, is about how do we intentionally uh, invest in our small businesses so that they can grow their capacity to whatever it is that they want to be. And so I just want to uplift that because you are one of our successors now coming back uh, to pour back into this next cohort and uh, looking forward to that. Also, I want to highlight uh, that you're not the only one, but there are other folks that this is their first time doing business with the city of Columbus who are also small businesses as well. And so uh, really excited about this program. And thank you uh, for helping uh, entrepreneurs find their voice to be able to tell their story and to be able to sell themselves. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, before I move for passages, there any comments or questions from my colleagues? Uh, again, really proud of this program. I want to thank Director Stevens, the Department of Development, as well as Ariana, our small business liaison, and her entire team. Uh, we have to be intentional when it comes to our small businesses. Uh, you see all of the big corporations' signs uh, in downtown Columbus, and yes, that matters. Uh, but what matters more are our small businesses. They power our city. They hire more people. Uh, they uh, uh, are more generous in our communities, and they are the heartbeat of our city. And so we have to make sure uh, that we continue to invest in them 
at every stage of their life cycle. And so I'm really proud to continue this work and again want to thank uh, the department for their partnership uh, because under our leadership we have increased our small business investment by over 50 percent over the past two years uh, and it is showing that it is working because we have businesses that are growing and that continue to pour back into our communities uh, so with that council president i move for passage clerk please call the roll bankston barosa de padilla de ocauer doran's favor green remy weich president harden pass uh, that is all I have, but I forgot to mention that if you are a small business and entrepreneur, that the application opens January 29th, and this program is on, on a rolling basis, so it will stay open until uh, all the slots are filled. You can access the application on the City Small Biz um, Hub, which is uh, cbussmallbizhub.com. Uh, thank you, and that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Next committee coming for council is the Public Service and Transportation Committee, chaired by Councilmember Rosa de Padilla. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you, Council President, and congratulations, uh, Councilmember. Um, I think the way that you've been able to elevate small businesses and intentionally invest in them is, um, I'm, we're seeing the results of that, so thank you. Um, I have one ordinance today in Public Service and Transportation, Ordinance 3443. Sorry, 3243-2023 to amend the 2023 capital improvement budget to authorize the, the transfer of funds and appropriation within the streets and highways bond fund to appropriate funds from the special purpose fund to authorize the director of the Department of Public Service to enter into contract with Complete General Construction Company for the Bridge Rehabilitation Whittier Street Bridge Rehab and SUP Widening Project and to authorize the expenditure of $3,642,168.24 from the Streets and Highways Bond Fund and the Special Purpose Fund for the project. This project includes the rehabilitation of the Whittier Street Bridge over CSX and North Folk South Railroads and includes the widening of the existing sidewalk into a 10-foot wide shared use path between broad or I'm sorry between Front Street and west of Front Street at the existing Scioto River Trail access point and other work as may be necessary so um, I, Deputy Director I want to turn it over to you if there's anything that you want to add on to this project I just wanted to highlight that this is another effort for us to backfill where we don't have safe passage for folks so having a shared use pathway for cyclists for um, pedestrians uh, is important, especially as we're doing some of these rehab projects, we're able to loop back in things like sidewalk shared use paths. Um, you know, uh, uh, we're doing some projects that will be coming up that we'll be talking about soon, um, again, for keeping our cyclists safe. So is there anything you wanna add about this particular project? Well, good evening, President Harden, Chair of Rosa de Padilla, members of council. This is an, a very exciting project because the existing six-foot path is a pinch point for the Scioto Greenway Trail. So by rehabilitating this bridge that get, connects Front Street over to the Scioto um, Audubon Park, it will allow us to put a barrier-separated shared-use path facility on that bridge that is 10 feet tall, or 10 feet tall, 10 feet wide, as you had mentioned. Uh, construction is supposed to be finished by the end of this year, and um, not only is the shared use path going to be on the bridge, but it is going to be on the side or sidewalks leading up to there. So it, the the path that will be leading to the bridge will also be 10 feet wide as well. Awesome, thank you. Um, do any of my colleagues have questions or comments? We tried to get a show and tell. We didn't have one for this particular project, but. It, next time, whenever available. Um, if I don't have any questions or comments, uh, seeing that I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcauer, Doran's favor, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Pass. Thank you. And I forgot to mention this in our announcements. I just wanted to thank um, our Snow Warriors again uh, for all the work that they did over the weekend to keeping people safe and treating our roads. Um, they were working around the clock. So I just wanted to thank um, the Deputy Director and all of our uh, Snow Warriors that were out in the roads this weekend. So thank you. That's all for me. Thank you, Madam Chair. Next committee to come before Council is the Neighborhoods, Recreation, and Parks uh, Committee, chaired by Councilmember Dayalkar. Councilmember, the floor is yours. 
Thank you, President Hardin. Uh, tonight in committee, we have Ordinance 3184-2023 to authorize the Director of Finance and Management to enter into contract with Regal Research and Manufacturing Company, LLC, on behalf of the Recreation and Parks Department for the purchase of golf carts to waive the competitive building bidding provision in Columbus City Code Chapter 320. 329 to authorize the transfer of $163,940 within the coronavirus state and local fiscal recovery fund to authorize the expenditure of $163,940 from the coronavirus state and local fiscal recovery fund into a declared emergency. Uh, the department is in need of 10 new accessible golf carts for the city's multiple golf golf courses. Regal Research and Manufacturing was the lowest bidder and is being con contracted for their green solo rider carts, which include an electric stand-up seat, a leg support system, and a retractable sun canopy. These carts will allow for inclusive participation at Mental Memorial Golf Course, Raymond Memorial Golf Course, Turnberry Golf Course, and Wilson Road Golf Course, and will be used by individuals with physical and developmental disabilities. Um, Director Reese, can you speak to why the department is waiving competitive bidding on this contract? Thank you, President Harden, Chair Aukauer. This is basically a, a contract where we ask an emergency, and that is for um, this vendor who is um, pretty much local, and um, they are local, and we are uh, having uh, difficulty with uh, meeting the deadline of when the business opens uh, in February. And so most of the time, golf opens in February, late February, um, depending on the weather, uh, but most of the time it is in February and we're trying to make sure that we meet that deadline. If we're looking at additional vendors, it's going outside of the local area, which would require additional timing, which would mean we would be in our prime season um, for golf. Thank you. Thank you, Director. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Angston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcauer, Doran's favorite green, Remy White, President Harden. Thank you. Before I move on, the next two ordinances on our agenda pertain to the 2024 Neighborhood Violence Intervention Program. This program, previously under public safety, now under Rec and Parks, aims to contract with trusted community partners to provide violence intervention and crisis response activities that include responding to specific violent confrontations, working to mediate and diffuse conflict tensions, providing support services to victims, families, and friends, and actively promoting peace building among our youth. Just as in years past, the two organizations that will lead this program are Columbus Urban League, overseeing the south and east sides of the city, and Community for New Direction, overseeing the north and west sides of the city, and each will be receiving almost $430,000 in funding. These organizations have established relationships with youth in the community and program participants, and it's important to keep the continuity of these relationships and trust. Thus. <coughs> Me. That's why competitive building is being waived in both ordinances. And Director Reese, are you able to speak to the success of this program in 2023? Yes. Uh, thank you, Chair Alcauer, President Harden, other council members. Um, Urban League uh, last year worked to uh, prevent and intervene in gang-related violence in Columbus neighborhoods, uh, the South Side, Hilltop, Linden, and near East Side community. Um, they participated in uh, social activities as the Cap City Nights, uh, the Red, White, and Boom, uh, Fishing with Dad, as well as the late basketball um, during the summer uh, at community centers. They also engaged 161 children uh, in youth, or I would say youth in intervention, communicated to 1,158 through emails or phone calls, they hired 116 summer uh, youth for employment. They diffused 68 potentially violent incidents that incurred with either guns or knives. So that was guns or knives that they diffused down. And then intervened in 178 after gang-related incidents um, that happened in different communities. Thank you. Thank you, Director. We're looking forward to seeing continued success with this program. So now let us get to the ordinances themselves. <coughs> uh, 
First Ordinance 3476-2023 to authorize the Director of the Department of Recreation and Parks to enter into contract with Columbus Urban League for services related to the implementation of the 2024 Neighborhood Violence Intervention Program to authorize the expenditure of $429,500 from the Recreation and Parks Operating Fund and to waive the competitive bidding provisions of Chapter 329 of the Columbus City Codes. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcauer, Doran's Favor Green, Remy White, President Harden. Thank you. Next is Ordinance 3478-2023 to authorize the Director of the Department of Recreation and Parks to enter into contract with the Committee for New Direction Incorporated for services related to <coughs> the implementation of the 2024 Neighborhood Violence Intervention Program. Excuse me. to authorize the expenditure in an amount not to exceed $29,500 from the Recreation and Parks Operating Fund 2285 <coughs> to waive the competitive bidding provisions of Columbus City Codes Chapter 329. <coughs> Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bangston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcauer, Doran's Favor, Green, Remy, Weich, President Harden. Passed. Madam Chair, you have one more. You, your co-chair can do it for you if you need him to pitch in for you. Yeah, actually, Chris, can you take over? <laughs> <laughs> Consider it a late birthday gift, Nancy. No worries. Uh, we have Ordinance 3520-2023 to authorize the Director of Recreation and Parks Department to enter into a contract with Payment Protectors, Inc., doing business as M&D Blacktop for the Hard Surfaces Program 2024 Phase 1 project to authorize the transfer of $1,387,046.60 within the Recreation and Parks Voted Bond Fund to authorize the amendment of the 2023 Capital Improvements Budget and to authorize the expenditure of $1,387,046.60 from the Recreation and Parks Voted Bond Fund. If there are no questions from my colleagues. I move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcauer, Dorans, Favor Green, Remy Weich, President Harden. Passed. Seeing no further business for the Neighborhoods and Recreation Parks Committee. Uh, thank you. Now going to the Workforce and Education and Labor Committee, chaired by President Pro Tem Dorans. Council Member, the floor is yours. Thank you, Council President. Tonight we have Ordinance 0006-2024 to authorize the Director of Department of Human Resources to enter a contract with Mount Carmel Health Providers for testing services, the divisions of police and fire, provisions of health and physical fitness programs to authorize the expenditure of $1,154,948 from the general fund and declared emergency. Uh, this ordinance represents the third of, one, or of three one-year contract extensions approved in the original contract. Uh, the health and fitness program is part of the current collective bargaining agreements between the City of Columbus and the Fraternal Order of Police, Capital Lodge 9, and the uh, City of Columbus and the International Association of Firefighters Local Number 67. Uh, the intent of the program is to ensure all overall general health and fitness of police officers and firefighters in the City of Columbus. Uh, emergency action is requested so that testing may continue pursuant to the collective bargaining agreements between the relevant parties. Do my colleagues have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcauer, Doran's Favor, Green, Remy, Weich, President Harden. Uh, thank you, Council President. all I have in my committees at this time. So is the Homelessness, Housing, Homelessness, and Building Committee, chaired by Councilmember Favor. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you, Council President Harden. Tonight in Housing, Homeless, and Building, we have Ordinance 3499-2023 to amend the 2023 Capital Improvement Budget to authorize the city auditor to transfer funds within the development taxable bond fund and within the Department of Development to authorize the director of the Department of Development to enter into a grant agreement with Healthy Rental Homes 7 LLC for an amount not to exceed $555,000 to authorize an expenditure of $555,000 from the capital budget development taxable bond fund 7739 to authorize the appropriation and expenditure of $513,000 $352.90 of the 2022 Home Investment Partnerships Program Entitlement Grant 
from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development and to authorize the appropriation and expenditure of $46,647.10 of the 2023 Home Investment Partnerships Program Entitlement Grant from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Healthy Homes is an affordable housing developer owned by Community Development for All People, a community housing development organization which is eligible for CHOTO home set-aside funds. Healthy Homes is focused on increasing the stock of high-quality housing options available to families earning no more than 80% of the area median income on Columbus's south side. Healthy Rental Homes 8 LLC seeks to further address the housing affordability issues that Columbus faced by developing 11 units of new construction rental housing in zip codes 43206 and 43207. These properties will consist of infill development designed to replace structures that have been demolished. Additionally, the parcels that have been identified for redevelopment are being acquired exclusively, exclusively from the City of Columbus and Franklin County land banks. The 11 rental units for which funding is being requested will consist of three single family homes and four duplexes. All but two of these properties will be built by Unibuilt Industries, a modular home builder located in Dayton, Ohio. In addition to high quality affordable places to call home, the tenant families who will reside in these units will have access to a variety of supportive services and advocacy opportunities. Healthy Homes hired a full-time tenant services coordinator to serve as a link between residents and health social service providers and Nationwide Children's Healthy Neighborhoods Healthy Families programming. The tenant services coordinator will work to increase health knowledge and self-sufficiency of our tenant families through outreach, community education, and referrals to community resources, social supports, and advocacy. Specifically, tenants will have improved access to health, educational, workforce, and life skills development opportunities. Financial literacy, parenting classes, and mental health services will also be emphasized. If there are no questions or comments by my colleagues, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Thanks, Dan Barosa de Padilla de Alcauer, Dorrance, Faber, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Pass. Thank you. Next, we have Ordinance 24 2024 to authorize the Director of the Department of Development to execute a lender participation agreement with numerous individual lenders who wish to partner with the Department of Development for the Department's American Dream Down Payment Initiative Program to waive the requirement under Chapter 329 of the Columbus City Codes that modifications to lender participation agreements be approved by City Council and to declare an emergency. The Department of Development's ADDI program provides down payment assistance using federal home funds or non-federal funds to first-time home buyers whose household income is at or below 80% or 120% of the area median income, respectively for the purchase of a home in the City of Columbus. The amount of assistance provided is the lesser of 6% of the purchase price or $7,500 and is provided as a forgivable loan. The household must remain in the home for a period of five years for the loan to be forgiven. The department partners with multiple lenders to provide information about the ADDI program to the lender's eligible clients as defined by program guidelines. Only lenders who have executed a lender participation agreement and whose staff have completed city-created training can recommend clients for the ADDI program. The city does not make payment to the lender for their participation in this program, nor is the lender a sub-recipient as defined in 2 CFR 200. A lender's participation in this program allows the lender to recommend a potential resource of additional funds to eligible clients who may not be able to purchase a new home without additional financial assistance. If there are no questions or um, Council Member Remy. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. I just wanted to say that, you know, as a realtor, we have <laughs> worked on this project for a long time um, in that department. I want to applaud them for finally making this accessible to the people that it's meant to serve. And um, the delays were egregious, to say the least, for people that were intent that this was intended for. So I'm glad to see that they're finally making steps in the right direction so that people that actually need this, especially in a competitive environment, one with lack of inventory, um, the excessive delays made it prohibitive to use in the past. So applaud the department for finally getting this accomplished and just wanted to thank you for your leadership. Thank you, Council Member Remy. If there are no additional questions or concerns, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. 
Bangston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcauer, Dorans, Faber, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Passed. Thank you. That's all I have in my committee. Thank you, Madam Chair. Next committee coming for Council is the Health and Human Service and Equity Committee, chaired by Councilmember Green. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, President Harden. Tonight in Health, Human Services, and Equity, we have three ordinances on second reading. The first is Ordinance Number 3473-2023 to authorize and direct the Board of Health to accept grant funds from the Ohio Department of Health in the amount of $1,812,807. $812,807. Um, and any additional funds from the STI Prevention Grant Program to authorize the appropriation and expenditure of $1,812,807 and any additional funds awarded from the unappropriated balance of the Health Department Grant Fund to authorize the City Auditor to transfer appropriations between object classes and grant numbers for the STI Prevention Grant Program. Uh, the funds from this funding award are for services provided between the period of February 1st, 2024 and January 1st of 2025. The STI Prevention Grant enables Columbus Public Health to identify and prevent sexually transmitted diseases through screening, early identification, surveillance, and treatment services. This particular grant allows CPH to provide their passport to partner services to individuals recently diagnosed with HIV and syphilis. And through the program, those individuals will be linked to treatment, provided with education and contract tracing, which allows health specialists to follow up with people who may have also been exposed to those uh, transmittable infections to likewise assess, screen, diagnose, treat when necessary, and provide subsequent education. All activities are conducted with an emphasis on populations at high risk. Um, and this program also provides case management and support to pregnant women with syphilis um, to, prevent, to prevent congenital syphilis. If there are no questions or comments from my colleagues, I move for passage. Second. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcauer, Dorans, Faber, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Pass. Thank you. Our second ordinance is number 0106-2024 to authorize the Board of Health to accept a grant from the Franklin County Board of Commissioners in the amount of $2,250,000 for the fiscal year 2024 Ben Franklin Tuberculosis Program to authorize the appropriation of $2,250,000 and any additional funds from the unappropriated balance of the Health Department Grants Fund to authorize the City Auditor to transfer appropriations between object classes for the FY24 Ben Franklin tuberculosis, tuberculosis Program and to declare an emergency. This ordinance authorizes the Board of Health to, to accept and appropriate grant funds from the Franklin County Board of Commissioners um, for the, their tuberculosis programming. Ohio Revised Code 3 333.71 uh, confers tuberculosis authority to the Franklin County Government Board of Commissioners offices, which in turn designates Columbus Public Health as the tuberculosis control unit for Franklin County. In that capacity, a CPH serves as the local authority for all aspects of uh, tuberculosis surveillance and reporting, medical management, and prevention and control activities in the county of Franklin County. Um, all in all interactions, priority is given to activities that ensure every uh, tuberculosis patient completes a course of therapy that's consistent with the Centers uh, for Disease Control and Prevention's uh, criteria and treatment guidelines. Um, and the uh, Ben Franklin Tuberculosis Program evaluates the treatment status and in infectivity of each case and implements interventions designed to mitigate to mitigate further TB transmission in the community. Services are provided to all Franklin County residents confirmed with or suspected of having TB disease and residents who have been to, exposed to those infections. If there are no questions or comments from my colleagues, I move for passage. Okay. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcauer, Dorans, Faber, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Passed. And finally, we have ordinance number 0163-2024 to authorize the Board of Health to enter into a contract with Crosby Drugs, Inc., pharmaceutical dis... Mm -mm -mm, sorry. To authorize the Board of Health to enter into a contract with Crosby Drugs, Inc., pharmaceutical distribution services for the period of January 1st, 2024 through December 31st, 2024, to waive the competitive bidding requirements, to authorize the expenditure of $70,000 from the health... Department grants fund to pay for the cost thereof and to declare an emergency. Um, 
This ordinance authorizes the Board of Health to enter into a contract with Crosby Drugs, Inc. for 340B pharmaceutical distribution services for an amount not to exceed $70,000. Competitive bidding has been waived as, as Crosby Drugs is the only HRSA 340B approved contracted pharmacy in Central Ohio that supplies tuberculosis medications and Columbus Public Health has a need to provide tuberculosis, ter, tuberculosis medication distribution for clients receiving treatment from the aforementioned Ben Franklin tuberculosis program. Uh, disruption to those services could be harmful to patients being treated at the Ben Franklin TB clinic. If there are no questions or comments from my colleagues, I now move for passage. Second. Second, please call the row. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, De Aukauer, Dorans, Faber, Green, Remy, Weich, President Harden. Yes. Thank you, President Harmon. That's, uh, Harden, that's all we have tonight in our committees. Thank you, Madam Chair. The final committee to come before council is the Public Utilities Committee, the Public Utilities and Sustainability Committee, chaired by Councilmember Wise. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Hardin. Tonight in Public Utilities and Sustainability, we have five ordinances that we're bringing before council. First up is Ordinance 0052-2024 to authorize the Director of the Department of Public Utilities to enter into a construction contract with JLD Construction Services, LLC, for the 2023 Fire Hydrant Replacements Project to authorize an amendment to the 2023 Capital Improvement Budget to authorize the transfer of cash and appropriation within the water bond fund and to authorize the expenditure of up to $2,358,337.50 from the water bond fund for the project. Uh, this project will replace damaged hydrants at various locations throughout the city as needed to provide adequate fire flows and improve quality throughout the system. Uh, if there are no questions from my colleagues, I move for passage. Bankston, Barroza de Padilla, de Aukauer, Dorrance, Faber, Green, Remy, Weich, President Harden. Passed. Thank you. Next, I have Ordinance 0061-2024 to authorize the Finance and Management Director to enter into a contract with Level 1 LLC for the option to purchase bill presentment services to authorize the expenditure of $1 to waive the competitive bidding provisions of the Columbus City Code and to declare an emergency. Uh, this ordinance is necessary to address an error that was caused in the original contract, causing the original contract to lapse. Uh, this contract has been in place since 2018. Um, if there are no further questions or comments from my colleagues, I move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barroza de Padilla, De Alcower, Dorrance, Faber, Green, Remy, Weich, President Harden. Passed. Thank you. Next, we have Ordinance 0114-2024 to authorize the Finance and Management Director to associate all general budget re reservations resulting from the ordinance with the appropriate current and pending universal term contract purchase agreements for the purchase of sewer treatment chemicals for the division of sewage and drainage to authorize expenditure of $5,630,000 from the sewerage operating fund and to declare an emergency. Uh, this purchase agreement is associated with chemicals needed to uh, complete work for the division. Um, if there are no questions, I move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barossa de Padilla, de Alcauer, Dorrance, Faber, Green, Remy, Weich, President Harden. Passed. Thank you. Next, we have 0123-2024 to authorize the Director of Public Utilities to modify and increase the contract for the purchase of wholesale electric power and auxiliary services with American Municipal Power, Inc. for the Division of Power to authorize the expenditure of $61,400,000 from the Electricity Operating Fund and to declare an emergency. This ordinance, ordinance provides funds for the purchase of wholesale electricity services for the Division of Power in 2024. The 2024 rates were established in an existing contract, um, but did want to hear from Deputy Director Shockey, uh, hopefully to get some clarity around this ordinance just for my colleagues. First, if you can describe the process uh, used when choosing a broker for city power. And then second, if you can speak to why this is moving as an emergency, given the amount. Thank you, Council President Hardin, Chair Weich, members of Council. It, when um, the City uh, Division of Power goes out to procure power, we work with um, outside counsel. Um, our outside counsel is uh, Susan Bruce. She works with a law firm. Um, and what we do is we seek competitive um, bidding for uh, that procurement of power. In this instance, um, we went out to bid at a favorable time in 2017. 
uh, to procure power at the best rate possible for division of power customers. Um, and so what you're seeing here today is our annual allotment, um, our annual purchase of pa wholesale power uh, pursuant to that contract. Perfect, thank you so much. Uh, if there are any questions, comments from my colleagues? Hearing none, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcower, Dorans, Favor, Green, Remy, Weich, President Harden. Pass. Thank you. And lastly, we have Ordinance 0135-2024 to authorize the Director of Public Service to apply for grants with the Keep America Beautiful and the Food Service Packaging Institute Foam Recycling Coalition to authorize the execution of grant agreements and other requirements agreements uh, recruit agreements related to the grants to appropriate and expend grant funds awarded by the keep America beautiful grant programs and the food service packaging Institute foam recycling coalition and to refund any unused funds and to declare an emergency this ordinance will allow the Department of Public Use, uh, Public Service and others to apply for multiple grants under the keep America beautiful program to provide funding for the America Recycles Day, the Cigarette Litter Prevention Program, the MLK Junior Recycled Materials Contest, the Foam Recycling Coalition, and future projects. Um, as always, any project that relates to sustainability for Columbus is one in which we're going to call out and highlight for City Council um, as we uh, work to achieve our goal of being the most green city in the country. Uh, so wanted to bring this before us today. If, are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Hearing none, I move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcower, Dorans, Faber, Green, Remy, Weich, President Harden. Pass. And that is all I have for my committee this evening. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Say no further business coming for counsel. Is there a motion to adjourn? Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcower, Dorans, Faber, Green, Remy, Weich, President Harden. Meaning is. Call the row. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcower, Dorans, Faber, Green, Remy, Weich, President Harden. Can I get a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal? Second. Clerk, please call the row. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcower, Dorans, Faber, Green, Remy, Weich, President Harden. Are there any additions or corrections to add to the journal? Hearing none, the journal is approved. We'll now go to the zoning committee. Councilmember Dorrance chairs that committee. All members serve on it. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you, Council President. Uh, before we begin tonight's zoning agenda, first a little bit of housekeeping with the clerk. Please read uh, the numbers of the legislation in the zoning committee this evening that require a waiver of second reading. Ordinances 59, 75, 152, and 164-2024. Uh, thank you, Clerk. And I first move to waive uh, second reading on those items. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcower, Dorans, Faber, Green, Remy, Weich, President Harden. Waive. Thank you. Um, now allow me to briefly explain, explain our current rules pertaining to speaking for council and rezonings and variances. We only hear a staff presentation for ordinances that have a disapproval from rec recommending body or if we have a public speaker assigned to speak against an ordinance. We allow three speakers in favor of and three speakers against any ordinance. If someone signed up to speak and is not present, the next person on the list will be able to fill that slot. Uh, all speakers on council variances, including city staff, area commissioners, applicants, and members of the public, will be sworn in before they give testimony. Uh, representatives of an area commission and applicants are always able to speak on an ordinance and do not need to fill out a speaker slip. Uh, tonight, uh, we have two public speaker slips um, regarding our agenda here this evening. On the advice of the city attorney's office, I will now swear in city staff. Please stand and raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, nothing but the truth, as you shall answer the pains of penalty of perjury? If so, please say I do. Thank you. Please let the record reflect that Brandon Carpenter and Eastman Johnson from the Department of Building Zoning Services and Dan Bleschmidt from the Department of Public Service have been sworn in. Uh, before we get to the ordinances tonight, I uh, always like to point out for the body on, on the front end, our agenda tonight will be consisting of four total ordinances that can pave the way for building up to 191 new housing units across the city of Columbus. If approved, these units would be, would be built in the greater southeast and north central planning areas. With that in mind, we'll turn to our legislation. First, we have Ordinance 0059-2024 to rezone 5071 Ebright Road, being 10.997-plus uh, acres, located in the west side of Ebright Road, being 3,000-plus uh, feet south of Winchester Pike from our rail district to ARLD, Apartment Residential District, site 
Um, this site uh, consists of three parcels developed with a single unit dwellings on a monopole telecommunications antenna as a result of the recent annexation of the city of Columbus. Uh, the request of rezoning will allow 186 apartment union complex. A concurrent council variance is also on our agenda uh, this evening. Uh, the proposal has approval from city staff, development commission, and the Greater Southeast Area Commission. Do my colleagues have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcauer, <coughs> Dorans, Faber Green, Remy Weich, President Harden. Pass. Thank you. Next, we move into the Council of Variances portion of our agenda. First, we have Ordinance 0075 2024 to grant a variance of provisions of Section 33320.35 R3 Residential District, 3332.05 Area District Lot Width Requirements, 3332.13 R3 Di Residential District Requirements. 3332.26 minimum side yard permitted of uh, Columbus City Coast for property located at uh, 1271 6 B Avenue to allow a two unit dwelling and reduce development standards in the R3 residential district. Uh, the site consists of three parcels with the center parcel developed with a single, single unit dwelling and the adjacent parcels on each side which are undeveloped. Uh, the requested council variance will uh, conform existing conditions for the single unit dwelling and will allow construction of a two unit dwelling on each of the undeveloped lots. A council variance is required because the R3 district does not allow two unit dwellings. Staff supports the request as the proposed variance will conform the existing reduced side yard for the single unit dwelling. It will allow two unit uh, dwellings on undeveloped lots consistent with the existing housing types and plan recommendations for infill housing on vacant lots within residential areas. The proposal has approvals from city staff and one approval and two disapprovals on the variances requested uh, from the North Central Area Commission. Uh, generally, those uh, recommendations we receive for the project overall, however, in this case, they reported differently um, per variance. Um, due to the split lot and due to the split approval and disapproval, we will now hear from staff presentation from the Department of Building and Zoning Services. Um, uh, Mr. Johnson, the floor is yours. So, um, to be honest, uh, I was going to read the recommendation. Oh. Uh, <laughs> however, that was already read. I can read it again, though, if you like. I think we're good. Uh, any yeah. questions from council members of the department, specifically on the, their city staff approval for the project? No, sir. No. Um, okay. Well, next, we will allow the uh, applicant to come forward, uh, Ms. Brenda Parker. Ms. Parker, welcome to council. I'm going to swear you in when you get to the podium. Um, please raise your right hand and, and uh, do you swear from the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, nothing but the truth, as you shall answer pains of penalty of perjury. If so, please say I do. I do. Thank you. Ms. Parker, the floor is yours. Okay. I will keep this super quick and super simple. Um, the project developer for the project is part of the Affordable Housing Trust program called the Emerging Developer Accelerator Program. It trains minorities and women in how to develop properties in Columbus. As part of that program, it requires an 80% AMI, so it's affordable housing. So any project that's developed through that program has to meet that requirement. In order for these properties to meet that requirement, duplexes were um, a necessity in order to kind of get the, the numbers to work. Um, so that's why we're asking for duplexes on each of the two lots. Um, duplexes can integrate seamlessly into a neighborhood. If you look at Victorian Village and Grandview and even South Arlington, there are duplexes that are seamless in the fabric of these neighborhoods. So even though this is trending toward a single family neighborhood, we don't feel like a duplex is out of place in this location. It's also a little bit of a compromised location as it is across the street from a motorcycle club and adjacent to one of the properties is the parking lot for that motorcycle club. So we feel like a duplex is a great kind of uh, fulfillment of a, of a tricky location as opposed to a single family in that location. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Parker. Any questions by council members for Ms. Parker this time? Great. Um, we may call you back up after we hear from the Air Commission. Thank you. Um, as I mentioned, we had two uh, public speakers signed up to speak on this ordinance. I'll call them in order. Uh, first, we have uh, Commissioner Williams from the North Central Air Commission. Commissioner, welcome back to council. Good to see you tonight. Um, and I will uh, have to swear you in when you get up here. 
Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give? Shall we the truth, nothing but the truth, as you shall answer in a painful penalty of per per perjury? If so, please say I do. I do. Thank you. Floor is yours, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. Um, this particular project as a whole with our community, speaking to various people in the community, we are not, we're against it, um, especially from a safety aspect. Um, understand that they're wanting to have more homes in the community, and we definitely want more homes built within North Central. However, we just feel that this is not a good fit for, especially with this particular variance. Um, in September, on 12th, which is just a city block away, there was a fire on one of the new built homes that Homeport had made, um, and the house completely burned to the ground, thus causing damage to the neighboring um, property, Miss Richardson's property. Um, we, as of last week, finally got that property torn down. Um, and that was within code. So if we're putting homes that is even closer together, what damage is that going to cause? Instead of if a fire was to occur, instead of it just affecting one or two families, this would affect five because they're wanting to put two sets of duplexes in between a single family home. So I think that this is a safety issue, which we still, again, we want to build homes for our community, but we have to do it the safe and right way. And I just think that this variance is inappropriate. Um, and just the general consensus that I've gotten from other fellow community members, granted they reside outside the 125 feet zone, but even the church located on Sigsby that is literally a stone's throw from this particular um, property, they didn't even get a notification to speak. So the general consensus, I've had several individuals come to me that they're not for this particular project. Um, again, the safety concerns, fire, especially, and then how long it took for us to kind of get the other properties torn down. We do not want to put other residents at risk. I mean, I don't think it would be bad if there was single family homes and they had the appropriate spacing in between, but just with us just having a fire within our community, this is very scary for a lot of residents. And I just wanted to express my concern with that. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, any questions from council members for Commissioner Williams? See none. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the other speaker slip we have uh, uh, to come before council tonight is uh, Miss Lisa Brown. Ms. Brown, welcome to council. Uh, and I'll swear you in real quick. Uh, do you swear from the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, nothing but the truth, as you shall answer to pains of penalty of perjury? If so, please say I do. I do. Floor is yours, ma'am. Hi, uh, my name is Lisa G. I'm the fifth generation that lived in American Edition. Um, having a duplex is uh, out of place. We've had single-family homes that weren't the best-looking ones. You know, we're bringing them up to code, but um, having duplexes is out of place. And this variance uh, with the possibility of fires, it's not a good look. It's not a good thing to have in American Edition. I am a resident of the American Edition. Uh, like, as Myra said, several people have made their comments about it. We don't like it. Point blank. Thank you. Yeah. Any questions from council members for um, Ms. Brown? See them. Thank you. Thank you. Um, also, want to pause and see if the applicant has anything else they'd like to say at this time. I would just like to address the safety issue. The zoning requirement for a 40 foot wide lot is three feet from the, the sidewall to the property line. We are actually five feet from the sidewall to the property line. So there are 10 feet in between these structures. The existing house that's located on the site is a little bit shifted on its property. And that's why we're having to ask for the side yard setback because of that ex existing condition. But we left a lot of space between these duplexes so that it fit with the neighborhood pattern. Thank you. Any questions from council members to the applicant at this time? Council Member Bankston. So just to, just to clarify that for me, so you're, you're preserving an existing home, is that correct? Yeah, the house in the middle is an existing single family house. Got it, and so the variance is for the double that's closer to that half. What is the, the distance between that you're requesting? Uh, there's going to be seven feet between those two structures. Okay, and then ten feet between the other. Okay, 
Got it. Yeah, really more because it's shifted over. So there's probably um, yeah, yeah, 13. That. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any, any other council members? Seeing them. Thank you. Um, before I call for a vote, I, again, want to thank the North Central Air Commission for, for being ha down here tonight. I certainly understand this is not the first time we've had this discussion with this Air Commission wanting to see more single-family house construction with, within um, their planning area. Um, you know, unfortunately, given, again, as the applicant sort of reference, uh, the housing costs that exist in Columbus right now, um, when we're seeing the ability to bring new units online, um, th there's additional ways to, to build in some lower level density in some of these places, and these duplexes are a great example of that, of having more housing units in an area uh, that otherwise may have only had the ability to have a single family housing unit. And at a time in which we have such a housing shortage in Columbus, that again, additional density, even though it's, you know, we're talking about duplexes rather than some multifamily, it does seem to fit in this particular instance. I know that there's questions around safety here, and it's certainly valid. And I want to appreciate that Commissioner Williams talking about the, the delay in getting the prior house um, um, demolished. I think that's a code issue that we can certainly do a better job and work through at the city level. Um, but again, seeing as a Division of Fire and others have uh, had the city approval on this project, um, those questions are not necessarily a zoning one for us here tonight. It's really a question of what is the land use. And certainly we can speculate a lot of different ways that the project may or may not um, have issues down the line. But really the question before us is, is a, a variance before the body. Um, so therefore, at this time, I'd, I'd ask my colleagues to, to support this um, piece of legislation. And I first move to accept the entire staff report into evidence as an exhibit. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcauer, Dorans, Faber, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Thank you. Next, I move to adopt the finance of staff as the finance of council. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcauer, Dorans, Faber, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Adopt it. And finally, move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcauer, Dorans, Faber, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Pass. Thank you. Next, we have Ordinance 0152-2024 to grant variance provisions of Section 3332.037, R2F Residential District 3312.49C, required parking the Columbus City Codes for property located at 533 South 3rd Street to conform an existing office use with reduced parking in the R2F residential district. The site consists of one parcel developed with an office converted from a single unit dwelling. The requested council variance will conform the existing 2,344 square feet of office space at this location. Staff is supportive of this request as it legitimizes the existing office use and maintains the historic nature of the site. Uh, the proposal has approvals from city staff and the German Village Commission. Do my colleagues have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I move to accept the entire staff report and do evidence as an exhibit. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcauer, Dorans, Faber, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Accept it. Next, we move to adopt the finance of staff as the finance of council. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcauer, Dorans, Faber, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Adopt it. And finally, move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcauer, Dorans, Faber, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Passed. Thank you. And finally, we have Ordinance 0164-2024 to grant advance of provisions of Section 3333.02 AR12, ARLD, and AR1 Apartment Residential District Use, and 3332255 Permit Yard, the Columbus City Coast, the property located at 5071 Inbright Road to allow existing monopole telecommunications antenna and a reduced perimeter yard for an apartment complex in the ARLD apartment residential district. The proposed council variance will permit a 186 unit apartment complex that was subject to a rezoning ordinance we passed earlier in tonight's agenda. The proposal has approval from city staff and the Greater Southeast Area Commission. Do my colleagues have questions or comments? Seeing none, I first move to accept the entire staff report into evidence as an exhibit. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcauer, Dorans, Faber, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Accept it. Next, I move to adopt the finance of staff as the finance of council. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcauer, Dorans, Faber, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Adopt it. And finally, I move for passage. Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcauer, Dorans, Faber, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Pass. Thank you, Council President. That's all we have in tonight's zoning agenda. Uh, seeing no further business coming before council, is there a motion to adjourn? Clerk, please call the roll. Bankston, Barosa de Padilla, de Alcauer, Dorans, Faber, Green, Remy, White, President Harden. Meeting is adjourned.